evolution premise number one, the missing link. In the last hundred years, there have been numerous discoveries of what evolutionists claim to be the missing link. But, fact, time and again, those claims have proven to be false. Nebraska man, Lucy, Java man, Piltdown man. Evolutionists now say that none of these are in fact a missing link. Of course Lucy and Java Men are no longer classified as missing links. We found them. How can they still be missing? That's why it's proper to refer to them as a transitional fossil. As for Nebraska Man and Piltdown Man, well, Nebraska Man was thought to be a hominid only by one scientist. There was never any peer-reviewed articles ever done by him. And the pictures you see of Nebraska Man were done by a magazine, not any scientific journal. Piltdown Man was a hoax, and the hoax was exposed by scientists. The reason this hoax was conducted was because English scientists wanted the origins of humans to be in England and not anywhere else. Even Charles Darwin, the father of the theory of evolution, said the fossil record should be full of many different creatures that would show transition, not just for man, but for hundreds of other species as well. But note his observation. The number of intermediate varieties which have formerly existed must be truly enormous. Why then is not every geological formation and every stratum full of such intermediate links? Geology assuredly does not reveal any such finely graduated organic chain. And this, perhaps, is the most obvious and serious objection which can be urged against the theory. When Charles Darwin first released his theory, paleontology was in its infancy. Because of this, there were not many fossils for Charles Darwin to observe in the first place. After Charles Darwin released his theory, Archaeopteryx was discovered, and before that, Neanderthals were even discovered in Europe. But since Darwin has died, there have been thousands and thousands of transitional fossils found. One very recent one is Tiktaalik. Evolution premise number two, spontaneous generation. No scientist accepts spontaneous generation. This is just a straw man which is defined as life coming from non-life all by itself. The origin of life has nothing to do with the theory of evolution. The theory of evolution is only interested after life has already started. It does not explain how life came to be. It explains how life is still present on this ever-changing planet. Fact. From the mouth of a Nobel Prize winning evolutionist, there are only two possibilities as to how life arose. One is spontaneous generation arising to evolution. The other is a supernatural creative act of God. There is no third possibility. Spontaneous generation, that life arose from non-living matter, was scientifically disproved 120 years ago by Louis Pasteur and others. That leaves us with the only possible conclusion that life arose as a supernatural creative act of God. I will not accept that philosophically because I do not want to believe in God. Therefore, I choose to believe that which I know is scientifically impossible. That quote sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? Well, that's because it is. The, that quote is a complete fabrication. It is based on a quote from The Origins of Life by Dr. Wad that was written in August 1954. The reason he keeps saying spontaneous generation is because the term abiogenesis was not coined yet. When he is saying spontaneous generation, he is referring to abiogenesis as we think of it today. Evolution premise number three, mutation. Evolution says that mutations can play an important role in the development and advancement of any surviving species. But, fact, there has never been a documented case of a beneficial mutation that hasn't involved loss of genetic material. This is an outright lie. If you just look at the Italian wall lizard and see the development of a sequel valve in a daughter population, which the parent population did not have one, that would be a beneficial mutation with the gain of information. Or that has created a new species. Things don't mutate into new things. A mutation doesn't produce major new raw material. You don't make a new species by mutating the species. That's a common idea people have, that evolution is due to random mutations. A mutation is not the cause of evolutionary change. There is nothing wrong with the Stephen Jay Gould quote. He's right. Mutations cannot create new species. Natural selection does. 
Natural selection is a driving force of evolution, not mutations. Mutations can add new variety to a species, but natural selection is what shapes that new variety into beneficial adaptations. Evolution Revelation. The title of the book that details Darwin's evolution concepts is often referred to as the origin of species. But the full and not so often referred to complete title of Darwin's book is The Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection or The Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. What does Darwin mean by favored races? Darwin means species when he says races. They're misrepresenting what Charles Darwin said, just like earlier with the quote from Dr. Wald. Here are his own words. The more civilized so-called Caucasian races have beaten the Turkish hollow in the struggle for existence. Looking to the world at no very distant date, what an endless number of the lower races will have been eliminated by the higher civilized races throughout the world. Charles Darwin, Life and Letters, page 318. This shows that Charles Darwin did have a flawed understanding of what race was. We now know that race does not exist within humans. That did not come about until DNA was discovered. This quote is him lamenting the fact that civilized cultures will be wiping out the savage cultures. And even if it was the case that Charles Darwin was a horrible racist, it still would not negate the fact of evolution one bit. Science stands on its own merits, not the merits of the person who discovered it. This is your brain. These are your ears. This is the evidence. Will you hear? Random chance or design? Which is more believable? Of course it's not random chance. Nothing about natural selection is random. So given this false dichotomy, I would have to pick design by natural selection. The next time you try to crack the code, Ask who designed it. And of course, the designer of the code would be nature, the driving force of natural selection.